cooking and cleaning i don't know if you wanted a maid out of this but that's not me so we'll figure that out together we work together we are equals uh money and bills your money is our money my money is my money um so i guess we got that figured out for my future husband um number one is dean if your dean is not intact your faith is not strong we cannot be together because how are you not going to be loyal to god but be loyal to me next is mahir i will base that solely off of your financial situation um and also based on my needs if those can meet then that means you're ready for marriage anyways um children i want three i'm not trying to drive a minivan but if you need more than that that's a negotiation we could talk about later cooking and cleaning i don't know if you wanted a maid out of this but that's not me so we'll figure that out together we work together we are equals uh money and bills your money is our money my money is my money um so i guess we got that figured out but if you need help i'm more than happy um friends we can have friends of the opposite gender as long as i am friends with the girl and you are friends with the guys who i know and if they're couples we i love that we'll have fun i find the most pernicious and most unacceptable type of feminist as a muslim feminist do you know why because a, a true feminist, like of a second wave complexion or uh, background orientation, she would, everything's 50-50. Domestic housework is 50-50, true. yeah? True. And also true. finances are 50-50. X, Y, Z is 50-50, yeah? Everything is, that is what the ideology says. Yeah, Ngozi, yeah. who wrote the Feminist Manifesto, said everything should be equal except for breastfeeding. And she gave that only, as the only exception in her little pamphlet book that she wrote which is yeah. not really an academic mm. book anyway but it's popular so she, she, the everything should be 50 50 no problem if everything is 50 50 which means i'm not going to be putting extracting half of my resources for you I'm, I'm i'm going to save money i don't need to do this i don't need to protect you in fact protection is 50 50 if someone comes in a burglar i don't need to protect so on all that stuff is 50 50 <laughs> so if i'm if i'm with a feminist i would rather be Uqsum billah al -azim, yeah Put in religious, put, if we're just talking just based on the the, the, the the domesticity or lack thereof or the interactivity, a domestic interactivity and transactional nature of the domestic environment between man and woman, I would rather be with a feminist than I would be with a Muslim feminist. Why? Like a Christian. I'd rather be with a Christian feminist or something. Why? Because at least she has a sense of self-consistency. Everything is 50-50. Mm. But the Muslim feminist, she wants to take the resources which means she wants to not make it 50-50 when it comes to finances and work Never. and protection. <laughs> yeah. Plus, mm. so she wants to take all of the things her enti Islamic entitlements, plus she wants to have her feministic entitlements. Mm. So she wants a double entitlement. Yes. That woman is a leech. Mm. That woman is just a leech and she needs to be called out in the community. People mm. like yourself mm. need to say, listen, don't leech off the man. You choose what you want to be. You want to be a Muslim? This is Islam. Uh, you know, mm. this feminism is different and you can't yeah. mix in. If you want to be yeah. both, then you're going to end up being a leech. Uh, charity. Yeah. You're a charity. You are a charity. You might as well go to Oxfam and put your hands out like this. This is what you should do. With all due respect. I'm sorry, I'm going... But this, the, the entitled nature of some people that want both, if you, are, if you want 50-50, then you have to provide 50-50. Right, you right. Want, you, do you see the point here? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get your point. And I think it's interesting. It's just anecdotally, again, um, the, the, the experience of, of brothers kind of on these matrimonial apps, et cetera, is pretty much what you're saying. So I'm, I'm hearing again and again about sisters who want the traditional benefits, exactly. but don't want the traditional responsibilities. Allahu Akbar. This is beautiful. So they like, want the traditional you said what benefits. I was trying to say for like four or five minutes. You said it in like <laughs> one sentence. The other day, my 15 year old, she was in school. <clears throat> Teacher was going around after asking the different students, what do you want to be? What do you want to become when you grow older? What was her response? I want to be a housewife. What was the teacher's response to that? Shock and horror. What were the students' response to that? Laughter. Particularly the girls. Why? Because she said she wants to be a housewife. Now let's talk about this for a second. The state of affairs now, and Muhammad Hijab said it best, it is more preferable to marry as a man, a non-Muslim feminist, than a Muslim feminist. Because 
at least the non-Muslim feminist is going to literally go down 50-50 down the middle. Whereas the Muslim feminist, what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. What's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. And cooking and cleaning, we split it down the middle. The non-Muslim feminist is not going to say that to you. She's going to say to you, we're going to go 50-50 on everything. Sisters, I have a question for you. The competition for of sisters that are, that are currently available to choose from right now is so weak it has never been easier than now to differentiate yourself it has never been easier than right now to differentiate yourself from the rest of the herd because brothers are sick and tired of the crap that is on offer crappy deals that are currently available which is keeping Muslim, single Muslim men, Muslim men single for longer. Particularly those top tier men. Baba Ali said it on, on the podcast I ran with him. That the top 10% earners amongst the Muslims in America right now are simply choosing not to get married. For what? Why? Okay, yes, we understand we're going to fulfill half our deen and keep it halal and so on and so forth. The problem is what's available is so, is so poor. The options are so poor. What are you bringing to the table, sister? And let me tell you what the most important question you must ask yourself in your mind, the most important mindset you need to engrave onto your mind when approaching a brother. Do you want to know what it is? It's one sentence. This sentence contains just five words, a few characters. That sentence is, how can I serve you when you approach a brother you need to approach him with the mindset of not what can i get out of you no it's how can i serve you five words why do i say that i'll tell you why because i can already hear and feel the sisters getting triggered <gasps> excuse me what how dare you how dare he? What's he talking about? How can I serve you? I ain't no maid. I ain't no slave. I ain't no servant. Really? Okay. Is that is that how you process it? Men who are married do better in their professional careers than men who are unmarried. This is not a secret and it's nothing to shy away from, gentlemen. Men who are married are more successful, are higher earners, tend to be more content than women than men who are unmarried. What does that tell you? A good, decent woman elevates a man. A good, decent woman elevates a man to a higher plane than what he would have if he was alone, single. When he elevates, he takes his wife right along with him. A king can marry a peasant, a pauper, a bum, a, a, a woman, a broke woman, someone who works in McDonald's, a receptionist. He will marry her and make her a queen. By default, as a result of her marriage to him. A queen won't look a pauper's way, a broke man's way, a receptionist's way, a guy working in McDonald's way. She would even give him two thoughts. And if she does, by some freak of nature, guess what? She can't even make him a king. Queen Elizabeth right now, the queen of, queen of Britain. Her husband recently died. He wasn't the king. He was the queen consult or consul. I don't remember, remember what the word is. Like the court jester. It was the court jester. Joke thing. Absolute joke. A queen can't elevate a man. A king can elevate any woman. Which is why I say to you, sisters, the most important question you must ask yourself when approaching a brother, the mindset you need to have is, how can I serve you? Shall I tell you why? Because when you serve him, when you fulfill and meet his needs, which are very few, by the way, to the best of your ability, he elevates. And what happens when he elevates? He takes you there right along with him. A rising tide raises all ships. Well, that's only true in the case of a man elevating. When a woman elevates, do you know what happens? She becomes disenchanted. 
And if that chasm between her and her husband or boyfriend, whatever the case may be, becomes too wide, too significant, eventually that disenchantment will turn into bitterness and resentment. Why aren't you more ambitious? Why aren't you achieving more? And many of those women eventually leave their relationships. If your woman is starting to outperform you in her career, in her professional life, whatever the case may be, gentlemen, you are on a timer. You are on a ticking time bomb because she starts to think, I can do better. Only women think like that. When did you ever hear a man say, I can do better? I settled. Never. You never hear a man saying, I settled. This is the kalam. This is the speech of a woman. Why? Because she can't be with her inferior. It grates upon her hypergamous nature. She needs to be with a giant. She needs to be with her superior. Which is why I say to you ladies, the most important question you must ask yourself is not, what can I get out of this man? What can I take from him? What can he do for me? No. The question you must ask yourself is, how can I serve you, my king? Oh, yes. Did that hurt? Did you feel the sting? Did it pinch? Yes. He's your king. And guess what? He will make you his queen. Do you know what the difference is in requirements between a high value man? And I know a lot of, a lot of men, people get triggered with this term high value. When I say high value, it's very simple. I mean a man who is highly desirable to a large demographic of women. Generally speaking, those type of men are men who are on top of their professional lives. Of course, they have to look, be look, looking half decent. They have to be in good shape. All of those good things. But what separates them from the rest of the herd, generally speaking, is their success in their professional lives. Of course, as Muslims, deen is important, character and so on. I'm assuming that's a given. You pray five times a day. You're honest. You fear Allah in private. Those who fear their Lord in private. I'm assuming that's a given. We shouldn't be handing out brownie points here for basic stuff. Basic. After that, how do we differentiate between the high value man and the low value man? Between the men who are desirable to a large demographic of women and to the men who are not desirable to a large demographic of women. Visibility. Comes down to one word. Visibility. And generally speaking, men who are more successful in their careers have a higher level of visibility. Their social status goes up and now suddenly they are more appealing to a larger demographic of women, to a larger pool of women. Do you know what the difference is between those type of men, the top 10%, the top 5%, the top 1% and then the average Abdullah? Elite Ilyas and average Abdullah. Do you know what the difference is in what they require from a sister in marriage? Do you know what it is? You ready? Nothing. Nothing. They have no zero additional requirements. Zero additional requirements. What Ili Ilyas wants and what average Abdullah wants is the same thing. With one differentiating factor. Elite Ilyas doesn't have more criterion or criteria when looking for a wife. He simply looks for a sister who ranks higher on the criteria. Shout out to Abdul Malik for that one. He's looking for a sister who ranks higher on said criteria. Are you obedient? Are you respectful? Are you feminine? Are you friendly? Can you smile? Can you... Can you smile? Do you know how many sisters have a problem with smiling? Yes, flipping smile. We like it when you smile. You look nice. You look pleasant. You look like you're pleasant to be around. Women like men who don't smile a lot. Men like women who do smile a lot. Newsflash. When you're not smiling, you're coming across like a bloke to us with your masculine energy. Smile. Can you cook? Are you willing to clean without complaint? And do simple things around the house without complaint. And to a high level. Do you look nice? Are you in shape or are you fat? Your fatness is unacceptable. Your fatness is unacceptable. You're out here on the market. The marriage market that is. You're looking for this top brother. And you're coming here with your size 14, size 16, size 18 self. What are you talking about? You're flobby. 
everywhere. Like it's all just popping out left and right. This is important to us men, our visual creatures. We are very specific on what a woman looks like. And that's not to say you have to look like a supermodel, but you better be in shape, especially if you want to marry Elite Elias, which is what all of you want. You are all overlooking some diamonds amongst the average Abdullah brothers, whom are many, of course. But you all want the Elite Elias. Fine, you can want what you want. I am telling you what Elite Elias wants. You must rank higher on the criteria. You rank higher on the criteria. How can I serve you? If you found this video beneficial, check out this video right here where I explain to you sisters why you must make your husband your priority. <laughs> Dar, dar,